Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chair of the Freedom House Board of Trustees, Michael Shirtoff. Good evening, and welcome to what we hope is our first and only virtual awards gala. On behalf of the Freedom House Board and our annual awards co-chairs, Katie and Ira Carnahan and Susan and Tom Stout, I want to thank you for being here and for your support for the vital work of Freedom House. Tonight's program will be a powerful reminder of the fact that there is no greater cause than the cause of freedom. Thank you for sharing this universal human cause with Freedom House. You're in good company. Over the last 80 years, this organization has worked with and recognized so many champions of freedom. The groups and individuals we will honor tonight will humble and inspire you. They have been on the front lines, and those of us who have always lived in democracies truly cannot imagine what that is like. But I believe everyone who contributes to the cause of freedom is worth celebrating. There are several champions of freedom who are supporting tonight's event in particular that I would like to thank before we begin. Our freedom supporters, Norm and Karen Wilcox, and TransUnion and our freedom advocates, Kitty and Ira Carnahan, Noni and Andy Prozis, and Transamerica. And finally, I'd like to recognize and introduce the deeply dedicated president of Freedom House, Michael Abramowitz. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the annual awards event for Freedom House. What is lost in not being physically together tonight will be more than made up by the incredible stories that you will be hearing. 2019 was a tremendous year for nonviolent resistance to dictatorships all over the world. And 2020 is turning out to be an important year for protests as well. We are honoring some very special people tonight. For our most important Freedom Award, Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement, the Sudanese Professional Association, and the organization of the December Revolution Martyrs Families. And for our Raising Awareness Award, actor and activist Nazanin Boniati. All of our honorees showcase both the power of protest and the innate desire for freedom in the human heart. Our honoree stories also remind us of the unique role that Freedom House plays in the ongoing quest for liberty, justice, and democracy. The tools that Freedom House is able to supply, thanks to you, are so important. Our research is used by activists to make their own unique case for freedom to their own governments. We support defenders in documenting human rights abuses. We help activists find a lawyer if they are arrested and provide security systems for their computers. When necessary, we get the families out of harm's way. We provide medical assistance if they become sick or injured. Wherever they are, the voices of the people who fight for freedom are amplified by our work. Through us, they are connected to the most powerful people in the world and the most important media outlets on the face of this earth. In short, Freedom House helps make it possible for the people leading protests and movements to do their work. We don't tell people what to do or provide a single ideology, but we do provide a comprehensive toolkit for freedom. And we offer our solidarity to those on the front lines of the struggle. Tonight, we celebrate the accomplishments of the people of Sudan who overthrew a dictator. And we rededicate ourselves to helping the people of Hong Kong and Iran win their liberty. Sanctions and saber rattling by the Chinese government, including efforts to intimidate me personally, will not stop us. The protesters and freedom fighters of Hong Kong and Sudan have been part of the Freedom House family for decades, as have the people who seek liberty and democracy in Belarus. Tonight, we hold in our hearts the freedom fighters and protesters of Belarus 
and remember that their need for our support is critical. The people in Belarus have been peacefully demanding their right to choose their leaders since the sham presidential election of August 9th. These have been among the largest peaceful pro-democracy protests in the history of contemporary Europe. And at the heart of this effort is the undeniable courage of three women in particular, Svetlana Sikhanovskaya, Maria Kalinaskava, and Veronika Sapkala, who are inspiring millions of people to stand up to a tyrant. Freedom House is proud to support these leaders and protesters. When the crackdown started, we immediately mobilized emergency support for those being persecuted by the authorities. We also connected decision makers in Europe and the United States with Belarusian civic leaders. We helped drum up support and solidarity for the protesters. As we think of all these courageous individuals around the world tonight, including those protesting racial inequality and injustice, here in the United States, I offer you this. My friends, democracy is not dying. It is being revitalized now in our country and beyond. Protest is powerful and freedom is powerful. I wanna tell you how one of my colleagues at Freedom House defines freedom. Kaskandi Abdul Shafi grew up in Darfur in Sudan. During his childhood and young adulthood, Kaskandi and his family endured systematic violence at the hands of the Sudanese government. He witnessed unthinkable atrocities. Kaskandi knew from a very young age that his own government was against him because of who he was, because of his ethnicity and because of where he lived. Today, I'm proud to say he works as my colleague at Freedom House, helping the activists of Sudan and other countries achieve something like the freedom that he now enjoys. Kaskandi describes freedom as the ability to answer in the way that he uniquely wants to, a never ending stream of questions and choices that add up to making a person who they are. Think about it. Freedom is at its very heart the ability to be me. I think it's as good a definition as I've ever heard. Kaskandi is joined by countless others at Freedom House and around the world who have committed themselves to the cause of freedom. Tonight, I pose a question to you. Will you join us? Freedom fighters can take many shapes, as you'll see from our speakers tonight. Some are on the front lines, and others provide the critical funds so that organizations like Freedom House can support those on the front lines. During our program, you will see the number 1-833-923-1130 at the bottom of your screen. Please text the word donate to that number to make your donation. Or you can donate at our website, freedomhouse.org, slash gala. Finally, you can also use a QR code that you see at the bottom of your screen. I ask that you give generously. It is only through your support that Freedom House and our honorees this evening are able to make the world more free. Please join us. Thank you for your support and for being part of this greatest cause in human history, the cause of freedom. Our next speaker, like everyone here tonight, is passionate about this cause. I'm so grateful that she has made time tonight to address us. Ladies and gentlemen, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Hello, as Speaker of the House, and proudly a 2017 Freedom House Leadership Award recipient, it is my honor to send warm greetings to the tireless leaders and advocates of the 2020 Awards Gala. Thank you, President Michael Abramowitz and Secretary Michael Chertoff for, year, for your years of committed leadership to advance the cause of peace 
and security around the world. Nearly 80 years ago, thanks in part to the visionary leadership of Eleanor Roosevelt, Freedom House was founded to promote international cooperation and oppose the forces of division. Today, Freedom House remains a clear and consistent voice for protecting freedom and democracy and a vital catalyst for progress at home and abroad. Tonight, we come together to celebrate the power of protest, a pillar of freedom that has been central to building a more just and equal world for countless people in every corner of the globe. Congratulations to tonight's Raising Awareness Award recipient, Nazanin Bonaidi, whose fearless determination has advanced the rights of women and refugees in Iran and across the globe. And thank you, Kristen Clark, President and Executive Director of Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, for your special reflections later this evening on social justice protest happening here in the U.S. We're also inspired by tonight's Freedom Award honorees, brave individuals who have risked all to secure the blessings of liberty that are the right of all people. From the brave men and women of the Sudanese Professionals Association and the organization of the December Revolution Martyrs Families, whose activism in the face of tyranny and oppression helped secure a democratic future for the people of Sudan. To the inspiring young protesters of the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement who have shown the world that the dreams of freedom, justice, and democracy can never be extinguished by injustice and intimidation. The Hong Kong protesters' extraordinary outpouring of courage stands in stark contrast to the cowardly government that refuses to respect the rule of law or the one country, two systems framework guaranteed more than two decades ago. This ongoing struggle is a challenge to the conscience of the world, demanding our unwavering commitment to hold Beijing accountable. If America does not speak out for human rights in China because of commercial interest, we lose all moral authority to speak out elsewhere. On behalf of the United States Congress and all peaceful, loving people, thank you to all of tonight's honorees for harnessing your power to advance the promise of freedom and the hope of democracy for yourselves, for your children, and for generations to come. Congratulations again on your well-deserved recognitions. In recognition of their leadership in the transition to democracy in Sudan, Freedom House is honoring the Sudanese Professional Association and the organization of the December Revolution Martyrs Families with a 2020 Freedom Award. <laughs> We, the people of Sudan, have had enough and we want change, we want freedom, we want the ability uh, to build a new Sudan. Uh, when SPA started uh, in 2010, it was a group of different professionals trying to network. Uh, one of the things that uh, the previous regime did very well, it, it uh, it broke all the links between like-minded people. There was no room for freedom, no room for, for civil workers. The SPA worked with uh, the different peaceful tactics like uh, strikes, uh, civil disobedience, and uh, the great sit-in. All these were, were, were peaceful tactics that, that were used to protest and to show that uh, we, the people of Sudan, have had enough and we want change, we want freedom, we want the ability to build a new Sudan. June the 3rd, it will forever be the most painful day for, for all the, the members of this organization and for all Sudanese people. The military came to the sit-in, they start to kill, injure, rape, and take captive of all the protesters. The Mertris Families Organization started after the massacre uh, by a small number of families. They came together to, just to share their pain. Oh,
You know, after the massacres, uh, all the family members and his friends started to change their profiles to the shade of blue that he loved. As it's come some, some, some sort of support for the family as for his soul. And it started blue for matter, then it spread all over the world, blue for Sudan, and he became an icon. And the blue started to be the symbol of Sudanese revolution. So all the, his friends outside Sudan, they raised the voice of Sudan, and they let people to know what's going on in Sudan by changing their profiles to blue. So this blue became the revolution color now. The world has to move towards, uh, uh, towards democracies. Uh, dictatorships are supposed to be of history. It does not make sense that we are in the 21st century and uh, we're still dealing with, with uh, basics like freedom. Our hope is to have a democratic Sudan, like what the matrix call for. Peace, free, freedom, peace and justice. So this will lead to democracy and what we are hope, this is our hope for Sudan in the next years. We should, we should move forward towards development, we should move forward. Uh, I think enough is enough. The world has to move to another zone, to another place. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Marco Rubio. Hi, it's Marco Rubio, and now this year, 2020, I can't think of a better group of people for Freedom House to recognize than the people of Hong Kong, particularly those involved in defending democracy and freedom. You know, it's a lesson to, to us that those who've known freedom and have tasted it don't give it up easily. They're facing tremendous obstacles right now. We've watched with keen interest and with great disgust as Beijing has cracked down on freedom and the bravery and the courage it's taken by so many to speak out against it at great risk of their personal security and their own safety. And while we watch in horror by what Beijing do, is doing, we are inspired uh, by the bravery and the courage and the vision of, of those who are fighting to defend and protect democracy. So you've picked a, a great group to recognize this year and I want to thank Freedom House for doing that. God bless all of you and, and God bless freedom and the people of Hong Kong. In 1997, a promise was made to the people of Hong Kong. One country, two systems, autonomy, freedom for 50 years. But we didn't get 50 years. Our freedom, after steadily declining since 1997, ended this year. You. Our friends at Freedom House know our story. You began tracking how our rights have been slowly eroded by mainland China year after year after year. During these years, the freedom-loving people of Hong Kong have used peaceful protests to stand up against the theft of our rights. Through protest, we sent a message to mainland China and to the world. You have followed our protests. You remember when we started carrying umbrellas in 2014 to protect our identities and our bodies. The protests of 2019 were different. One third of Hong Kong's population was inspired to actively participate by New Year's. All generations all socio-economic groups. We were united, and we knew we had nothing else to lose. As our protests grew stronger and larger, the police response grew violent. Activists were charged with rioting. Organizers were arrested. A police officer shot an 18-year-old demonstrator, then a 14-year-old. Masks were banned. Protests escalated. The free world was watching. 
then came the crackdown to crush Hong Kong liberties once and for all, so innocently called the National Security Law. Since the National Security Law went into effect in June, students have been detained, protest leaders arrested, activists disappeared, professors fired, pro-democracy candidates banned from participating in legislative council elections. Elections delayed indefinitely. Free speech in Hong Kong is gone. Hong Kong's freedoms, gone. Tonight, Freedom House honors the protesters of Hong Kong, but you must do so without naming or identifying any of them. To identify and honor these leaders publicly would put their lives at risk. Hong Kongers have now joined other groups mortally oppressed by China. Uyghurs, Tibetans. Our shared goal must be a day when the protesters of Hong Kong can be named because they are once again free. We will say their names next to Uyghur and Tibetan names next to Sudanese and Iranian names, because freedom will prevail. The human spirit cannot be controlled. The communist government of China won't stop. And we, the people who know that to be free is to live, we won't stop either. The protesters of Hong Kong are this year's Freedom House Freedom Award winners. We all look forward to the day when we can say their names. Hong Kong is the forefront of the clash of authoritarianism and democratic values. We've been talking about the reception of democracy for decades. And I think that the true reason is we fed the authoritarianism. We have been using our engagement and uh, appeasement strategies to engage with China and uh, with the hope that it will open up and democratize in the future. But the reality is it has been going to the opposite way. It gets more and more authoritarian and use its um, expansionist nature, use its uh, sharp and soft power to penetrate the protection of the democracies and to infiltrate into these countries to discredit and dismantle democracies. So for me, uh, the, the thing that is to um, abandon that wishful thinking and to really take actions to counter and to contain the authoritarianism in these countries and to help um, those people on the ground who have been fighting for democracy for their own rights and for the sake of uh, democratic values. In the battle of uh, fighting for democracy for Hong Kong, it's also crucial that how the world could contain the authoritarian expansion of China and weaken its uh, authoritarianism. So of course, uh, the, the Western democracies like the US and UK and Europe, they uh, play important role to really containing that authoritarian expansion and to ask China to fix its human rights violation internally. Otherwise, there will be more pro proactive measures by these countries. And I think this is the right direction to go. Freedom for me is uh, about having eternal vigilance towards the injustice in the society and to be able to combat it freely. For me, it is not only about what we can do, but um, our responsibility to the society and how we could help the other underprivileged in it. So for me, um, it's important that we have uh, the freedom to, um, to combat those unjust un injustice in the society and to bring up a better world to the humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, the Freedom House Raising Awareness Award recognizes individuals who advance the cause of freedom by informing and inspiring others. This year's award recipient, Nazunin Bonyadi, is one of the most stirring voices in advocacy today. Born in Tehran, at the height of the Iranian Revolution, her parents moved to London shortly thereafter 
because they did not want to raise their daughter in a place that was growing increasingly oppressive towards women and girls. The move shaped her view of the world. Nazunin's advocacy and charitable work is as impressive as her acting career. She is a leading example of what it means to use your own powerful voice to give a voice to those in need. Please welcome Freedom House Board of Trustees member Goli Ameri in conversation with Nazunin Bonyadi. <music> If I've done anything to make you think I feel that way about you, I apologize. This might be a little forward, but do you have a bomb strapped to your chest? This is stupid. Go, let's go. I'm getting my baby. Human rights advocates continue to work hard to end the abuses and conflicts at the root of the global refugee crisis. It's not enough for us to only condemn rights abuses when they fit neatly into our political narratives. It's time for us to put people before politics and unite on issues pertaining to freedom, justice, and equality. Nazanin, welcome. We're delighted to have you here. We're very proud of what you've accomplished. Um, you know, I was thinking that you and I have uh, something in common. The Iranian Revolution changed the direction of both of our lives, which is probably why we both care deeply about the cause of freedom because we want everybody else in the world to have the same choices and opportunities that we've had. I want to hear from you as to, as to what this moment of history meant to you and did for you. Well, thank you, Gorli, uh, and thank you to Freedom House. This is a real, real pr privilege for me. I was born in the aftermath of the Iranian Revolution in 1979, and it was a time when the rights, uh, people's rights, uh, political rights, social and legal rights were quickly diminishing. And when I was 20 days old, before any harm came to my father, we managed to escape. And I grew up in London. From early on in my life, I never took any of my freedoms for granted. And when I was 12 or 13, uh, I went to Iran with my mother and uh, we visited Mashhad and Tehran and Rasht in northern Iran and my privilege became so glaringly obvious. I was raised in a country where freedom of speech existed, freedom of assembly, women were, were equal to men before the law, um, child marriage and child labor, labor were illegal. I got to choose if I wanted to wear the hijab or not. And that wasn't the case in Iran. When I, what I saw was uh, people who wanted freedom and really worked hard every day to gain those freedoms. And when I went back to London, I wanted to lend my voice in any way I could to, to amplify theirs. And, and it really just became a, a, a huge uh, goal in my life to, to see that freedom prevail. Nazanin, Freedom House called 2019 the year of protest, and we are certainly seeing the sentiment continue in 2020 with the civil rights protests in the United States, in Hong Kong, and in Iran. Do you think these protests are going to have a lasting effect? I hope so. You know, I, I recently saw a video of a man in Idlib, an artist in Idlib, Syria, who was standing am amid the ruins, uh, amidst the ruins of, of Idlib. And there was a, a lone wall, crumbled wall standing on which he drew, a uh, painted a mural of George Floyd. And it was so inspiring to me that this man who, was standing in these ruins and had suf suffered, he and his people had suffered such grave injustices and suffered so much, 
while the world frankly turned away from their suffering, had the empathy in his heart that extended beyond his borders, his empathy was limitless. It wasn't confined by his borders or just for his people. He wasn't saying, yes, but what about us? He was saying, we share your suffering because essentially an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And my goodness, I walked away from that thinking, we all want to say, yes, but what about us? Whereas what we should be saying is we are all in this together. And <laughs> excuse me if I get emotional, but that is in essence what advocacy is about, is if we stand for George Floyd, which we must, we stand for the rights of George Floyd and every person who suffers police brutality in the United States, we cannot ignore Puya Bakhtiari who who was shot to death in the protests in Iran in November 2019, or the people suffering in Syria or Yemen, um, or the injustices in Hong Kong, um, Lebanon and beyond. And when you call yourself a human rights advocate, it's all inclusive. You know, Nazarin, watching you um, talk, um, sort of reminds me of the special relationship that artists have with freedom of expression. What, what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? Since time immemorial, there, there's been a, um, a sort of a synergy between arts and, and advocacy. Uh, and I hope they continue. I think it's very important that we, we keep raising our voices um, and that we're not cowered into silence, but there's inherent risk to advocacy that we have to take on because there are people in this world who want to hold on to the status quo of um, silencing people and, and taking away people's freedoms and rights um, and oppressing society. And I think with that comes a huge responsibility for those of us who have a microphone in our hands to, uh, to, to speak truth to power. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Freedom House Vice President of Development, Brian Hill. Thank you, Nazanin, for all that you've done to advance the cause of freedom. I also want to send a very special thank you to Goli as well. I'm excited to share that she has generously offered $25,000 to match donations we received tonight. You know how urgent the fight for freedom and democracy is, and you've seen this evening the important role that Freedom House plays to advance this cause but we can only do so with your support. Please help us meet Goalie's challenge and our fundraising goal for this evening's event. As a reminder, you can give by texting the word donate to 833-923-1130. It's such an honor for me to introduce our next speaker. Just three months ago, Svetlana Tsihanovskaya became an unexpected symbol of freedom and an inspiration for millions of Belarusian people. After her husband and presidential hopeful Siarhe was arrested, Svetlana started collecting signatures to be a stand-in candidate in the upcoming election. She did it on a whim, but was surprisingly allowed to register as a presidential candidate. She was an unknown name, a woman, a school teacher, and very suddenly, a powerful voice for freedom. Perhaps the most surprised by this turn of events was President Alexander Lukashenko, who has been in power for 26 years. Svetlana and her fearless team led an exhilarating campaign that spurred the largest support rally in Belarus's post-Soviet history. The elections on August 9th were marred with widespread fraud, and the official results handed the victory to Lukashenko. But according to independent exit polls, Svetlana won in a landslide. The day after the elections, she was forced by authorities to leave the country. Svetlana continues to be an inspirational leader and the voice of the people of Belarus who voted for her. We are humbled and privileged to have received this message from her this evening. Dear honorary guests, dear team of Freedom House, let me personally thank you for your work defending fundamental freedoms and promoting democracy around the world. This is what Belarusian people are fighting for at the moment. 
Hundreds of thousands of Belarusian people are peacefully standing up for their rights despite brutal repressions with a simple ask to start a dialogue and announce new, free and fair election. The first chairwoman of Freedom House, Eleanor Roosevelt, said, Freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With freedom comes responsibility. I think we as a nation are learning this lesson in the moment. Thank you for the inspiration that Freedom House provides us with every day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker, the President and Executive Director of the National Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, Kristen Clark. It is my pleasure and honor to address the supporters of Freedom House. Let me begin by congratulating tonight's award winners. You all are an inspiration to all people all over the world who are in pursuit of freedom and justice. Thank you for your leadership, for your fearlessness, and for your dedication to freedom. Protest is powerful, indeed. The organization that I lead, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, was created in 1963 at the request of President John F. Kennedy in order to move the struggle for civil rights from the streets to the courts. You all know, as well as I do, that peaceful protests of yesterday are literally what changed history. It's natural and right to look back at that time because it has so much to teach us, especially now. This year, protests in America are once again changing the arc of history. In the protests of 2020, I see the legacy of those who came before us and I see the leadership of young people right now who are moving our nation forward. This is a movement, not a moment. The 2020 protests have also been an expression of pain and frustration, yes, but just like the protests of the civil rights movement of yesterday, they're also a powerful expression of patriotism today. They're serving a vital purpose in advancing our nation's ongoing pursuit for equality and justice. In the United States, we protest because we want our country to live up to its full potential. What could be more patriotic than that? The emotion that is too often missed when talking about protest, however, is optimism. I have seen that optimism in recent months through the eyes of my own 16-year-old son. Most recently, uh, my son and I went out to a protest not too far from where we live, and the crowd was 99% white, multi-generational, and everyone, everyone in unison was chanting, Black Lives Matter. Miles' motivation, his optimism, is what motivates me. I want the world to be better and safer for him. I know that everyone here tonight shares my goal. That is one of the great beauties of Freedom House and of the award winners that you are honoring tonight. Around the world, across geographic, ethnic, and political lines, we all share the value of human freedom. These are hard times, but I'm hopeful. Tonight makes me hopeful. And I hope that celebrating the world's fearless, optimistic leaders of protest in the name of freedom make you hopeful too. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Freedom House President Michael Abramowitz. Freedom House has never had an annual awards event like tonight. And like all of you, hope that next time we'll be able to gather safely in person. This format, however, did give us an opportunity to showcase the stories of our award winners in a special way. I wanna thank all of them for the time it took to put this program together. And I hope all of you enjoy hearing so many powerful voices for freedom. I wanna thank Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senator Marco Rubio for joining us tonight. Each has been a true champion for democracy and human rights around the world. They are great friends of Freedom House and I applaud them for their leadership. 
Bipartisanship is all too rare in Washington these days, but the values we are celebrating tonight, freedom and democracy, truly cross the political aisle. Tonight's videos, plus additional footage from interviews, will be available on the Freedom House website. I encourage you all to watch and to share this content with anyone who cares about the cause of freedom. If you've already texted your pledge or given online to support our work, thank you very much. If you have not, now is the time. Simply text the word DONATE to 833-923-1130. We have been reminded tonight that protest is so powerful and your support is too. We conclude our program this evening with a final reflection on the change that can come when we stand up, or in some cases, sit in for what's right. In 1964, during the Civil Rights Movement, Sam Cooke wrote the song, Change is Gonna Come, to speak to his struggles and those of other African Americans. Looking back on our program this evening, it is clear that the struggle for freedom and equality is not over. There is still work to be done here in the United States and around the world. But if there is one thing I take away from tonight, from the inspiring leaders we've heard from and the millions of people who stand beside them demanding freedom, it is hope. So tonight, we'll leave you with a song of hope. Please welcome the American Pops Orchestra an international recording star, Nova Payton, performing a special version of A Change Is Gonna Come. Did we? 